women's community builder, I build places and spaces for women to thrive. And that's literally kind of like online places and spaces that are aimed at empowering women, especially over 40. Because I feel like we are very much kind of like forgotten, feel very invisible. But also God has given me a vision to build women's homes all around the world Mm. and change the face of the women's homes and create a space that's you know, very inspiring mm-hmm. for the women. Um, as somebody who obviously is involved in property, any advice that you could give with regards to when you get a vision so big, you know, like that, and you feel overwhelmed, how do you how do you deal with that? And then second question, just very quickly, is sponsorship and investors. So I need to raise quite a bit of money to be able to kind of, you know, uh, build the brand globally. Just any advice that you can give on that? Yeah, so first of all, an inner city in the, in the UK is called, uh, well, an inner city in the UK is London. Mm-hmm. The inner city in France is called Paris. So we're giving away our inner cities in America, which are essentially located real estate, which is invaluable real estate. So in the UK, the, the poor people are in the suburbs, just, just in the context of people who are watching this. Um, and, and so we have this gold mine in America called the inner cities we're not respecting. With regard to to small business creation, the biggest group to create small businesses in the pandemic in America were black women, mm-hmm. by far. Mm-hmm. In fact, this is a group around the world, women, who are really leading enterprise creation. So you're already on a great track by focusing on women. Number two, housing is gonna always be a staple. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's two things you can't go wrong, doing affordable housing and unfortunately doing funerals. Mm-hmm. Those two things just don't go out of vogue. People, people need them on the way in and on the way out. Yeah. Uh, so I would say incredibly focused. I wouldn't sleep much because you're on to something. But I also would not get overwhelmed. The calmest place in a hurricane is the center. Just calm yourself. Yesterday's a memory doesn't exist. Tomorrow's a promise has never happened. That's why you want to be present. That's why I call that a gift. Just breathe. Just breathe because when you breathe and you stay calm and you get present, you create more time. And what you need right now is time and execution. Every problem that you face should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Mm-hmm. The second thing you need, to, you need to do is to stop thinking so big. Mm-hmm. Dream big, but don't but think think logically. Mm-hmm. Dream big, but then get all that noise out of your head and say, "I want to do one house, not fifty mm-hmm. homes, not five thousand, not no no, one home. Buy it, rehab it, rent it, and hold it. I own seven hundred, just like that. I'm about to own twenty thousand. That's my next goal." Is to go from 700 to 2,500 to 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000. In the next two years, I'll do that. But the way you do that is one at a time. So I want you to think about how can I just go buy one home? You can get an investor for one home. Mm-hmm. Might be one somebody in this room. Might be somebody in this conference. When you try to think about, oh, I'm going to do 5,000 homes or 500 homes or 50 homes, all of a sudden the whole game has changed. Now you're overwhelmed and stressed out and you're your hair is breaking out. So just chill, relax, breathe. You're onto something. You're onto something really, really magical. Thank you. Hi, lovely to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I am a women's community builder. Mm-hmm. I build places and spaces for women to thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the visions that God has given me is to build women's homes all around the world. Mm-hmm. I'm in the process at the moment of building the first one, and it will kind of be the model and the template for all the others that I roll out. Because I just really want to kind of improve the look and feel of refuges and shelters to make them a place and a space that's inspiring for the women when they get there but um, I just wanted to ask you about imposter syndrome because God keeps putting me in places and spaces where I'm like what am I even doing here even now I was just saying earlier about I get very nervous doing things like this um, and I think this is maybe the fourth or fifth time I've actually been to the you know to this event um, so yeah, I just wanted to ask if you've ever been through imposter syndrome and how have you coped with, you know, coped with that? I probably should have been through it, but I might have been too blind or too anxious <laughs> to really recognize it. I think it takes a level of courage and it's not because it's really there, but we just learn to forge ahead because the need and the issue is so inside of us. So this is growing out of you. and. You know, we we learn to do it even when we're not confident in doing it, we do it anyway. But when you say women, I'm assuming it's women and children. And and when we begin to serve women and children, we're also serving the entire family unit. But there are certainly those who have special obstacles and barriers for having access to whether it's just health, water, you know, good food and housing and shelter. But I think I've faced um, 
probably just due to longevity, not any merit of my own, face many, many syndromes, whether uh, it's age at this point, whether it was uh, too young at one point, whether it was too educated at one point, whether it was uh, too, too trained or not trained enough. Um, the duality of our, it's really more than the duality of our identities is real. And we learn to have a code and a language for each environment and each set. And so I, some, some things are good about that, but the other things make us feel like, well, am I really being authentic? And I think that's what you're, you're talking about. And you are being authentic mm -hmm. because you feel it and your voice quivers when you say it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the women are crying for you. Oh, no. You probably hear it in your, in the, in your inner scripture. This is not a Bible session, but there's a scripture that says, the children are come to the birth, but there's not strength to bring forth. And that's not literally just young children or minors, but there are people who are waiting to breathe, to live, to, to have their own human agency. And so it's incumbent upon us, whether we feel it or not, to muster, if we borrow it, the strength to help them come to real life. And that's, that's a weeping process, that's a painful process, it's a labor, but it's God-ordained. And I'm looking to hear what comes from that. You're real. Not <laughs>